Today's troubleshooting is all about our smoke detection system. I was called by the duty officer and he told me that he's having the airflow alarm on line 16. And when I get to the CO2 room, this is what I have found out. The water went inside the panel and flooded the system. So come and join me in fixing this kind of trouble. Before entering the CO2 room, we need to take this gas detector. Then ensure that the ventilation fan is really working. We need to do this safety precaution because we never know if we have enough oxygen inside the CO2 room. We never know that there might be a possibility that one of these CO2 bottles is leaking. That's why we need this device to measure the oxygen level inside the CO2 room. Just a quick familiarization, once we switch on this device, you will see the last date it was calibrated. The next day of calibration and the battery percentage of this device. As you can see, we are measuring 20.9 oxygen level. To ensure that this device is working fine, we need to test if the alarm will sound once the oxygen level goes down. So what I will do is to blow CO2 onto the device to restrict the oxygen level it is measuring. And this is the sound you will hear once it activated. So once you hear this alarm, then you need to evacuate the area. Since everything is in good level and the device is working fine, now let's see what is wrong on our smoke detection system. As soon as I get into the control panel, there is an active alarm which is airflow alarm on line 16. This means that line 16 has a restriction on its airflow. And when I check the hose that is connected to line 16, this is what I have found out. There is a continuous flow of water coming from cargo hold number 8. And as this water went inside the control board and flooded our sensors inside. So just for the information of everyone, the system has two supply voltage. One is from the normal 220 and the other one is on the emergency generator room which is the emergency switchboard so that in case of emergency the system is always powered on either on the normal 220 volts or on the emergency switchboard after i switch off the breakers i call the bridge and i ask them to send someone inside the hold to check what is the condition in there as you can see the water continues to go inside the pipings which we need to find out what is the main reason. We are sailing in the Pacific when this thing happened. And in the Pacific Ocean, it is always raining. So while draining up the pipings and drying up the boards, we have decided to check what is happening inside the cargo hold number 8. And then we found out that one of the pipes of this CO2 lines was broken. So we called the fitter to rectify this one while I proceeded again to the CO2 room to dismantle all the sensors, the PCVs, and all the wirings on the inside. This also includes the smoke detectors, the airflow sensor, and all other components which was affected by this situation. So my plan is to use contact cleaner in cleaning all these contacts and all the components so that we can ensure that everything will be just fine. I hope that everything will be okay after that. By the way, this is the 
airflow sensor. It senses the airflow or the pressure on the pipings of a particular cargo hold where it is connected to ensure that there is a proper airflow on the system. Troubles like this, we need to be very patient. As this is part of the firefighting system of the vessel, we need to ensure that there is no back job once we reinstalled back all these components. So after dismantling the PCB, I will put it in the drying room to ensure that it will be dried up while I will do a blow through on the line. We are on the way to the drying room. We will put this one in there and see if it will dry up and check afterwards while I'm doing the blow through. Then we will take it back and install it back and see if it will work fine. So while waiting for the PCB to get dry, then I have decided to blow through the system. I will blow through all the lines while waiting for the cargo hold number 8 flange to be finished. I have a separate vlog regarding the blow through process on this kind of CO2 system. I will include on the description down below for you to be able to see what is the correct process. So the fitter did a good job in fixing the broken pipe. While I was in the CO2 room, ensuring that everything will have a good airflow. Good thing that we have a spare airflow sensor and we will change the old one. Although we can check the resistance of the terminals if it is okay or not, but I don't want to take any chances since seawater went inside the old sensor. In this way, I can assure everyone that the airflow will work just fine since we already have the spare one. So I installed back the smoke detector sensor and the airflow sensor. After that, I took the PCB again to reinstall it back. After we dried up everything and the uh, board was already, this PCB was also in installed and now we will power up the system and see if it will become okay. Then I went back to the emergency generator room and to the main switchboard to power on the system. After powering on, everything went in normal condition. And then my final plan is to test the system by activating one of the detectors if it is working fine. You can now reset. Okay, I reset. But that's it guys. I hope you learned something from this video. And please do not forget to hit the subscribe button for more ETO updates. See you on my next vlog.